The Kansas City Chiefs are back-to-back Super Bowl champions, making history and causing an uproar among spectators. Patrick Mahomes threw a three-yard touchdown pass to McCall Hardman with three seconds left in overtime as the Chiefs rallied to beat the San Francisco 49ers 25-22 in the second overtime game in Super Bowl history. But the Super Bowl is more than just a game, as North America's largest sporting event every year. There are a variety of ways that the Super Bowl overlaps with or even predicts economic trends. Joining us now to discuss that overlap is Brendan Caldwell, Director at Caldwell Securities. Brendan, thank you very much for joining us today. Oh, great to be here, David. Nice. Brendan, you, you love this time of year. You host a, an annual Super Bowl party. I didn't get invited, but I'll forgive you for that. Did your team win? No. I was rooting for the 49ers. It would have been one of my teacher's favorite teams growing up, and their quarterback, a guy named Brock Purdy, was Mr. Irrelevant. He was the guy drafted last in the NFL draft a few years back. And traditionally, historically, that person has never done anything in the NFL, hence the name Mr. Irrelevant, except he's now led his team uh, to the Super Bowl, which is kind of amazing. So I was really hoping for that underdog story as opposed to the overdog story of uh, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey And even if you don't follow football, if you're a young woman between the ages of nine and 39, you know that he's dating Taylor Swift. So that was just all a bit much. But Kansas City won, as you say, just as the first period of overtime was was uh, was wrapping itself up. So it was it was quite a show, an amazing game. The party I hosted was, in fact, even more amazing. I will put you on the list for next year, David. Beautiful. Let's let's talk about the food. Wings, beer, those are consumed yesterday. Uh, that day alone must keep the economy going, at least to a certain extent, right? Well, you know, I, I think the economy of uh, Southwest Toronto was kept going quite a bit by uh, by what uh, my party. I actually trucked out to the Caldwell Sausage Factory. Well, at least what was the Caldwell Sausage Factory in the 40s and 50s that my grandfather built it's now the cheese boutique at 45 ripley avenue in toronto (laughs) and i bought some monstrous great tomahawk steaks uh that we actually had a massive fire the grease coming down from them it was just epic um nearly burned my priest uh who tried to put out the fire um anyway that all happened so yes i'm not a chicken wing guy but the the food that gets consumed the beer the pop the the Loblaws and St. Clair and Bathurst got wiped out as well. It, it's it's a kind of a big deal, probably even more than the states than here. But uh, it's what it is. It's an opportunity for people to get together and have a common bonding experience in public the way we don't do as much anymore since the COVIDs. And it's been, uh, um, I think, really worthwhile over the years that we've hosted this. Let's talk numbers. We've heard that the Super Bowl is used as an indicator of a bull or a bear market. How does that work? Well, there's a predictor going back to the 1970s that if the American Football Conference, the AFC won, it was going to be a bear market. And if the NFC won, it was going to be a bull market. And that was like a 90% predictor between 1967 and I think the dot-com crash around the year 2000. It's not as good a predictor anymore, but that's a wonderful example of correlation and causation. The market usually goes up. The NFL has two conferences, the AFC and the NFC. Historically, the NFC has been the stronger conference with the um, Dallas Cowboys and the 49ers and the Green Bay Packers winning most of the Super Bowls. So if you correlate two things that happen most often, then it's no great surprise they happen most often together. In the last 20 years, the market's been more volatile with a lot more crashy years. So it's been a lot worse predictor since the beginning of this uh, century. And I want to touch on Taylor Swift. You can't talk about this year's Super Bowl without doing it. The Taylor Swift Swift effect, was it a major factor? I I don't know why you'd say the Taylor Swift would be a major factor. (laughs) I I don't know what where this is coming from um, at all. Uh, But yeah, she is the most famous 
pop star on the face of the earth. I, I don't even recall Madonna or Lady Gaga or any uh, pop star ever being as big as she is. I certainly have never heard of people being able to charge thousands of dollars a ticket to go to a concert. I mean, I love my children and all, but no. Uh, so this is a, a phenomenon, and like I think we've seen before, or at least we've seen it before, T Swift is just uh, is just bigger. Can you handle that? Brennan, thank you for your time today. Thank you, David. Appreciate it.